Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger and I'm back with another wrong build video. This time the AMG Mercedes C63 Coupe from 2018. Let's go. All right, real quick before we get into the video, I just want to shout out my own Instagram. I know it sounds funny, but I answer every single DM that comes my way. So if you have any questions about any videos on my channel, you can send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter or Discord. And speaking of Discord, if you're looking for a level 50 crew, there are a bunch of level 50 crews that are recruiting new players in our Discord. There's a link in the description down below. Now let's get into this AMG C63. The first thing I want to talk about is the engine. So let's get into the performance side of things real quick. All right, in the beginning of these videos, I really like to give you the best engine for the car. It's the most important part of this build because it's the thing that can save you a bunch of money. Now you notice there's tons of engines for each car. Like this one, for example, has 10 different engines, each of them costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. So my goal is to kind of save you money, show you the fastest engine for the car so that you know exactly what you have to save for and you know exactly which engine to pick. In this case, it is the 721 horsepower Forge 3.8 liter V6. This is the fastest engine for the car. I've tested every single one. I've built every single one with all Ultimate Plus parts and this was the fastest engine for the car. Now you can see I've got Ultimate Plus parts, but if you're just starting the game and you want to build this car, you can put anything in this car, whatever the highest tier parts you have, but make sure you've got the dual turbo and the five by three pound NOS. If you don't have ultimate yet, then whatever the small NOS tanks are, so like two by three or the three by three or the four by three, you know, whatever you have unlocked. And then as far as the chassis goes, I've got track suspension, elite brakes and elite race tires. Again, if you don't have super or elite unlocked, just make sure you've got track suspension and race tires. All right, moving on to the drivetrain, we got the Elite Plus Clutch, the Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, and the Super Track Differential. And then I've got Elite NOS Refills and the NOS Duration. Of course, sometimes if you're lower level, you don't have those unlocked, but make sure you unlock those and then use those for your builds. Pretty much goes for every single car. All right, there's one thing I do wanna do is run this through Sonic so you can get an idea of how the car handles. And then we'll give you the full track build on the build card and we'll move on. So let's get out to Sonic. I like racing Sonic in these videos because it shows something that everyone can kind of relate to, right? Everyone is pretty familiar with Sonic. So you kind of understand, you know, the the track and, and you can kind of get an idea of how the car handles for you as well. So one thing I've noticed is you have to start turning early. It doesn't have a super sharp turning radius but if you get it to slide at the right time it's definitely pretty quick I mean you can see it's got a lot of top end speed but it's just not the fastest coming out of corners so you'll see I hit this uh, and I can't see I didn't get that turn down right because I didn't cut it hard enough uh, early enough in the turn so I'm gonna leave that in the video though actually because I think it's important we're not necessarily going for a time here, even though it would be nice to see what it is. But I think it's important to see that it doesn't accelerate fast out of corners. I might need just a tiny bit more downforce on this. It feels a little bit, a little bit slidey on corners that I don't want it to. Anyway, it's, it's turning radius is not as, as sharp as some of the faster cars in the game, and it doesn't accelerate out of corners fast, but it does have a good top speed. I mean, we're doing 235 on this one. I wasted a little time in that corner, but that's okay. Like I said, we're not going for time on this one. You can kind of get an idea of how it, how it handles. By the way, I don't really like this super aggressive look on a car, but this one, it just looks so nice for some reason. Like this giant spoiler that's mounted to the trunk. Oh my goodness. That's a really bad turn. Oh, we can't really take this time as an indicator of how well this car performs on Sonic. This is this is some horrible driving by me. Come on, don't hit that wall. It slipped a little bit there. I took the wrong angle. 
It's got great top speed. 235. What if I NOS it again? 240 on the straight, dude. 241. That's not bad at all. That's super impressive, actually. Not a lot of cars can hit 240 on that straight. The 245, the car feels great. It looks amazing, but um, it's just not it's just not as sharp of a turner. It doesn't it doesn't react quite as quickly as you want it to. Even if you increase the steering sensitivity, then it becomes a little shaky, and then it slides a little bit too much. So I, I I'll show you my live tuning settings. And on second thought, I am gonna increase my downforce just one tick because I don't think it's high enough. Um, it slides a little too much for what I want it to do. So let me show you what I've got on the live tuning real quick. So here's what we just raced with, plus two steering sensitivity and minus two downforce. I think the downforce needs to come up just one. And uh, and then we're gonna leave the steering sensitivity alone. I think this is perfect the way it is. If I increase the steering sensitivity, um, it gets a little shaky on some of the straighter sections and it tends to slide a little too much. So we're gonna leave it just like this. Let's go ahead and throw up the track uh, the track build card so we can show you the full build like I did in the garage, but this time with everything included. All right, we got the 721 horsepower Forge 3.8 liter V6, all ultimate plus parts as always. And then we've got the ultimate dual turbo and the five by three pound NOS chassis. I'm not gonna change anything after that run on Sonics. We've got track suspension, elite brakes, and elite race tires. Elite Plus Clutch, Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, and the Super Track Differential. That's how it's going to stay. Auxiliaries are always the same on my track builds. They're going to be NOS refills and NOS duration. And then, of course, our live tuning, like I just showed you, plus two steering sensitivity, minus one on downforce, traction control off and off with a T. The off with a T. That's not a thing. Traction control off and then drift style on gas. All right. So, next build up is going to be the drag build, then we'll move on to the drift build. So let's see if we can make this thing go fast in a straight line. All right, to do this, we're gonna switch some things around, just a couple. So we gotta switch the NOS. If you've been watching my series, you know I like the one by 15 on drag. We're gonna keep the suspension the way it is, and then we're gonna switch to a more sticky straight line tire, which is the drag race tire, which by the way, I don't even know why the drag race tires are in the game. Uh, there is no drag racing in this game, except for with your friends. So that's why I give you the build. Anyway, this addition of this tire gives it plus 10, or plus, or sorry, 10 on all of the stats that you've got here, which is actually pretty cool. I like to see that, but I, you know, you gotta kinda have to take the stats with a grain of salt. It's not really the best indicator of how fast the car is, as you can see. I mean, if you look at the RSR, I think it's uh, power and high speed are, or at least it's power is not all the way at 10, and it's the fastest car in the game. So anyway, it's not the, the best indicator. So on the gearbox, we need to test each gearbox. We need to make sure that we have one of each. We do, and we'll make sure uh, which one gives us the best quarter mile as soon as we get out of the garage. And then that's pretty much it. You just wanna change the NOS, the tires, and then you're gonna test the gearboxes to see which one gives you the best quarter mile. So uh, let's do that. We're also gonna switch some uh, live tuning settings. We're gonna drop the downforce all the way down because when you do that, it gives you a little bit better top speed. And if you don't know what downforce is, because I know there's a lot of people that don't, but downforce is the amount of pressure that your car receives from the air that's passing over it. And you can change that by changing the spoiler, or like in real life, you would change the spoiler, or like you would change the angle of the front splitter or the canards that go on the sides. You can change the amount of downforce that you get um, to the car by doing that. Now, obviously, visually, you can't do that in the game but you just do it with the live tuning menu. So here we got we got uh, steering sensitivity at plus two. We'll leave that, we'll just put the downforce all the way down. It just lightens up the car. It's less pressure from the air. Okay, so right now we've got the seven speed in the car. That's an 8.80 quarter mile. If we switch to the six speed, well, let's start with the five. We switch to the five speed. 8.67, it drops dramatically. So the five is way faster than the seven in a quarter mile situation. So we're gonna leave that for now. 8.67, let's try this, let's try the six. Maybe the six is even better. Nope, 8.7. So the five speed is actually the fastest quarter mile gearbox for this car. That's actually pretty impressive. Um, usually the five speed is not picked. But in real life, the less shifts you have to do in a quarter mile, the better. So this makes sense uh, in a real world application and it, it makes sense in the game. So let's go ahead and give you this full drag build right 
now. All right, we got that 721 horsepower Forge 3.8 V6, Ultimate Plus Engine Parts, and the Ultimate Dual Turbo. The 1 by 15 pound NOS, Super Track Suspension, Elite Brakes, and Elite Drag Tires. We got the Elite Plus Clutch, the Super 5 Speed Gearbox, and the Super Track Differential, uh, Elite NOS Refills and NOS Duration. And of course, we went over the live tuning. You're going to leave the steering sensitivity at plus 2, downforce minus 5, traction control off, and drift style on gas. Let's drift it. So to make this thing into a drift build, we need to know if it's an all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive car. That's going to de determine the parts that we're putting on it. And in this case, this is a rear-wheel drive car. So we are going to be doing a rear-wheel drive drift setup, and then we can make some slight tweaks depending on how it performs. So we're going to start with the suspension. We need the super speed cross suspension. We already have drag tires, which is what you would want. And then for the differential, we're going to go with a Pro Drift Differential. So, this is it. This is the rear wheel drive setup. So let's take it out, let's see how it works, and we'll make some changes if we need to. This, oh man, this car feels great drifting, bro. It feels really good. I don't know if it's gonna score super high, but it feels really good. It swings back and forth really nicely. That was really nice, dude. 81? <laughs> what? 81, dude? Oh my goodness. Bro, this is nice. 81 is actually... Hi, Gardner. Hi. Dude, 81,000 is really good for this for this drift section. My best is 109, but that's with the RX-7. This is really good. I like this. Let's go have some fun. All right, that's enough. Enough drifting. This build is awesome. This is a great drift build. I really like it, and I'm gonna recommend it. Let's go to the build card. We've got that 721 horsepower Forge 3.8 liter V6. Of course, ultimate engine parts, or ultimate plus engine parts. Uh, ultimate dual turbo with the five by three pound NOS, which doesn't really matter if you're drifting in automatic or really drifting at all in this game. Uh, super speed cross suspension. We've got the elite brakes and the elite drag tires. Elite plus clutch and the super five speed gearbox with the pro drift differential. Elite NOS refills and NOS duration. Again, if you're just drifting around, doesn't really matter. That's my drift build. Let's go to the live tuning real quick. The live tuning is going to be plus five on the steering sensitivity and minus five on the downforce. This helps you with uh, slideability, 
the back end's a little lighter, and the steering sensitivity, you can control the car a little better. Traction control is off, and drift style is on gas, as always. This is an excellent drift build. I highly recommend it. Now, let's see what this car can do in the dirt. All right, to make this a dirt build or an off-road build, we're going to change a couple of things. Um, on the chassis, we're going to go to a rally suspension. And then we're going to go to an off-road tire. And then we're going to switch the differential as well. And we're going to change the gearbox back to the 7-speed gearbox for a race application. And then we're going to go to the, uh, sorry, the differential is going to be the rally differential. And I think we're good just right there. It's actually pretty nice to see a 400 plus off-road build. Not all off-road builds can get to 400 plus. Some of them are a little less, so depending on are you using so let's take this out to hdv2 and rumble test it write down the time so we know how this thing performs against everything else that i've tested all right here we go hdv2 see what this baby can do i'm like dr seuss over here hey not a bad turn let's go dude Feels good. Actually feels nimble. Doesn't feel slow. Gets to 140 on that section, which is something I always look at. It's not bad on the on the pavement as well. It's actually really nice, this car. Feels good on the dirt, man. This is nice. I hope it. I hope it puts up a good time. Oh, almost hit the tree. But we're good. We got in front of those cars before we had to go through this little clippy section, which is one of my least favorite parts of this race. But here we go. Now it's hard because you don't know whether to go inside or outside of these cars sometimes. Nice turn. There we go. Catch up to third. Woo! Not bad, dude. 151. Hey, did we just find another another good off-road car? This might be exciting, dude. It does have a lot of vents on its hood. So you know what happens when you have more vents on your hood. More vents equals more speed. That's just how it works. Look at all the vents on the hood. There's like 14 just on the one right side. Look at that. There's four different channels of them. 14 times four. Someone do that math. I don't know. 15161. We gotta write this down. All right, let's take it over to Rumble. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Can it run a 310? Can it run a 310? That's the question. I don't think. I don't think it can. To be honest with you. But we're gonna find out. All right. The truth is, a lot of cars can run a 151, but not all of them can run a fast time on this course. So we're gonna we're gonna see what happens here. Oh, I had to go around that guy because it was a little bit crazy there. There we go. Off to a good start. Let's get it, Mr. Mercedes. Little clippy at the bottom of that hill. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. Oh, my goodness. Super clip on that one. That's going to affect the, the final time for sure. Not by too much, but that's just part of the race, man. You got to watch out for that clippy. I think I'm going to have to go to the right next time I go through that one. All right. It didn't do too bad on this hill. Just a couple, but man, on that that last little section before the, before the finish line. Woo! Almost jumped out of the, jumped off the course. Everything else feels pretty good. It sticks in these turns when you when you handbrake, which is nice. Here we go. Oh, there it is. There's the pop-up. Get out of here, Raptor. You slow faptor. All right. Let's get through this corner. I know I'm going to bink him a little bit. We're good there. 
Can't mess with these cars. I have to go around them. That was a little bit of a, a dangerous move there, but I didn't want to get stuck on the outside of that, of that truck. There we go. Through the inside. We'll pass the Jester and Blaze and all these guys. And right around, catch up to Vladimir. He's always the one in second for some reason. He's got the Subi, but he doesn't know how to drive. Doesn't know how to drive. 302, bro, we are close to a good time. If we can just stay off the clippies. And off this thing. Oh my god, dude. At the very end? Come on, man. All the car had to do is turn just a... All right, we restart. All right, here we go. Can we make it through these clips? All good there, there. Handbrake it so we can make the turn. We made it, dude. 314. 314. It's actually an okay time. 314.96, not bad, okay time. It's, uh, let's see where that is, that, that is compared to other cars. 314, it's like, uh, you know, top 15, dude. Like the Corvette Grand Sport does a 314 on this course. And there's some other ones that do pretty well. All right, let's see what the combined time is. Combined time of 506.5. So, we combine the HTV2 time with the rumble time and it puts it at 22nd overall for the off-road cars that I've tested. There's a lot more cars. I've only got about halfway through the cars at this point, but there's like 130 of them, man. It takes forever to do these things. Anyway, this is like 22nd, so uh, it's in the top half of the cars that I've tested, which is actually not bad, dude. This car kind of moves, man, and I have to attribute all of it to the vents. There's just so many vents. I mean, look at these things, man. So many vents on this hood. Plus this giant spoiler in the back. Or, or I don't know what you want to call it, a wang, like some people. All right, let's give you the off-road build card and then let's finish this video up. So we got that same Forge 3.8 liter V6 engine, Ultimate Plus engine parts with the Ultimate Dual Turbo and the Ultimate 5x3 pound NOS. We've got the Super Rally suspension, Elite brakes, Elite off-road tires, Elite Plus clutch, Elite seven speed gearbox, and the Super Rally differential. Uh, NOS refills, NOS duration. And then on the live tuning, we have got plus five steering sensitivity, minus five on the downforce, traction control off, and drift style on gas. That is it. Let's uh, let's sum this thing up. Let's see what this car is good at overall. All right, so on the track, this car is just okay. I mean, it's faster than the slow cars for sure. And it handles pretty well. It doesn't have a very tight turning radius, but it handles all right. It runs a time of around three minutes, at least with me behind the wheel on Arian. And that's kind of like the threshold for a car that's fast that handles well and a car that's slow and can't handle at all. It's right on the line. So anyway, I think it's pretty decent. It's not the best car, but it's not the worst car. This is something you can definitely use throughout the campaign and afterwards racing with friends. You will have a good time with this particular car. It looks amazing and it performs okay. As far as drag goes, it's actually decent. 8.67 is okay. It's like kind of, again, middle of the road. It's not like the best or the fastest drag car, but it's also not the slowest either. So I give it some props there. Now, as far as the drift build goes, it's actually pretty good. I would put it in maybe in the top 15 in terms of drift cars. Um, it is a very, very solid drift car. You can use this build that I showed you in today's video for three-starring all of the events. You just have to get to get used to the way it handles. Um, a handbrake does help with transitioning, but it actually transitions from left to right really, really well. So you probably don't have to use the handbrake too much unless it's a really tight corner. And you can see that in some of the clips when the car would swing really, really quickly. That's when I would slap the handbrake for a second. Um, as far as off-road goes, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's in the top half of the cars that I've tested. It's nowhere near the top five or top 10, but it is, it is viable, it is usable. 
So overall, um, pretty pretty good car. It's not something that I would I would say that you should stay away from or that you shouldn't buy. It's worth the money. It's worth the grind if you if you grind. And then I'll say this: the motor is really expensive. The engine for this car I think is like six hundred thousand. So that's the part that I don't really like. But other than that. It's a decent car. So anyway, I just want to say thank you guys. If you made it this far and you're listening to this, thank you. I really, really appreciate you being here. We're getting there. The, the channel is growing like crazy. And it's because of you guys here watching the whole video. This really helps the algorithm. So make sure you leave a like. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one, guys. Remember, you can DM me anytime. I'll answer it. All right. I'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.